Shalom, this is Reverend John Ferret, and this is the first of three videos that we're going to be doing on the Sabbath, or in Hebrew, on Shabbat. And in this first video, what we want to focus in on, very words of God to show us the awesomeness of the Sabbath, the greatness of the Sabbath, and from God's perspective, how this is a big deal. Now, I've been part of traditional churches that meet on Sunday, and for the most part, most of the people would say that the Sabbath is Sunday in traditional Christian churches. But I've also been part of Messianic congregations, where most would say that the Sabbath is what you would call the Jewish Sabbath, the way the Jewish people celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday. However, being part of both churches, being members of both types of churches, what I've seen is seemingly that both in the traditional Sunday church and in the Messianic congregations, there is a loss of real understanding of what the Sabbath means, of the awesomeness of God's Sabbath Shabbat al Elohim, and especially from God's perspective, from God's perspective, this is a big deal. Now, this video is not a debate. I, I'm not debating what day the Sabbath is to be. We'll leave that go. That's not part of the aspect or the goals of these three videos. You believe in the Sabbath? What is it? How is it such a big deal? We're going to look at God's own words. We're not going to be looking at some Jewish or Christian at academics opinion. We're not going to be looking at a Jewish or Christian scholar and their theory or their ideas. What we're going to focus in on, we're going to focus in on the very words of God. So once we do Shabbat or the Sabbath, our understanding is of it is going to change. Our practice of the Sabbath is going to change. Our goal in episode one is for us to see the Sabbath as a big deal. So may it help us all, no matter what type of congregation we, believe, we belong to, may it help us all grasp that the Sabbath is the greatest of God's feasts. May we all seek to renew our understanding of God's word and the importance of the Sabbath. May we all again want to begin anew to do the Sabbath, to practice the Sabbath, to honor Yahweh Eloheinu. Yahweh, our God, the Lord our God. To honor him, to the Lord, as disciples of Yeshua, as disciples of Jesus. So are you ready? Come, let's go. Please repeat after me in Hebrew. Baruch Atah Adonai. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Melech Hafala. Eloheinu Melech Hafala. Ashir Bakhar Banu. Ashir Bakhar Banu. Mikol Hahamim. Mikol Hahamim. Veinatan Lanu. Veinatan Lanu. Torah Torah. Veinevoim Hatovim. Veinatan Lanu. Et Abbasara, Mashiach, Yeshua, Veinatan Lanu, Et Abrit, Chadasha, Baruch Ata Arona, Noten Hatebrei Emet. And together in English, let's say it together as one group of disciples following our Jesus. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all people and given us the Torah and the good prophets, and given us the goodness of the Messiah Jesus, and given us the new covenant. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the words of truth. So I want to talk about the Sabbath. 
but I will not use the words of Moses. He's a prophet, right? He gets his words from God. Yes, bless it. And, and it, it's therefore the word of God. I want to use the very words of God in the Bible to talk about the next concepts about the cell. The very words of God that Moses wrote down because he heard them and he said, "This is God said this. So we're reading it as God actually saying to this. You know that happens in the other four books. So we'll focus, focus on God's, the very words of God that are direct to us, not to Moses and then to us. Okay, that's why I brought that up. And the second reason is we need to talk about the fact that the Sabbath is very special. Wait till you see how special. I'm going to go to Leviticus 23, verses 1, 2, and 3. Leviticus 23, verses 1, 2, 3. Again, reading from the New Archaeological Study Bible from Crossway, the ESV version. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, okay, so this is the very words of God. Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, these are the appointed feasts of the Lord, that you shall proclaim as holy convocations, they, my are, they are my appointed feasts. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation, you shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all of your dwelling places. Now, first of all, there are many Christians today that completely uh, will look at these verses and actually misrepresent what God said. And they say, these are the Jewish feasts. God never said that. First of all, they're not feasts. Yom Kippur is not a feast. Okay. Try fasting for 25 hours on Yom Kippur. No water, no food, nothing. Okay. You're not going to be feeling very happy. Oh, I'm so thrilled. It's Yom Kippur. Okay. It's not a feast, it's an appointed time, a moed. Say moed. moed. If you've got a bunch of them, moedim. Say moedim. moedim. I'll be using those words. Appointed time, not feast. And what does God say? They're mine. They don't belong to the Jewish people. They're mine. And what's first in the list? The Sabbath. Because you have the Sabbath. Here are the eight. Okay, there's not seven Jewish feasts. Whoops, sorry. That's wrong. There are not seven feasts of the Lord or seven appointed times. There are eight. He says it. Leviticus 23. Sabbath, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Shavuot, Trumpets, which you know as Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippurim, and Sukkot. Those are the eight. Okay? Now, Sabbath is placed first. All right. And you say, wait a minute, Lord. Uh, this is obviously your inspired word. Here, you're teaching us and you put Sabbath first. Is there a reason for that? Now the others are in order of appearance from spring to fall. Okay, Sabbath is weekly. Oh God, I know why you did that. It's weekly and the other ones are, you know, once per year. So you just said, well, why didn't he put it at the end? He puts it first. Is he trying to say something to us? Yes. I strongly feel he is trying to say something to us. But we need to go deeper in his word. And by the way, in verse 3, many of your Bibles will say Sabbath to the Lord in your households. In Hebrew, a better translation is this. It's the Sabbath of the Lord in your households. It's his. It's not just of the Lord. It's his. Okay. This is the very words of God. Okay, question. Is the Sabbath a big deal? Okay, well, first of all, God said it's number one on his list. Okay, he's number one on the list. Okay, there are a lot of things that can be number one on the list. doesn't mean that it's the most important thing. But let's continue with this, and let's see where this takes us. Let's go to Genesis 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. Genesis 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. This is called the Kiddush on Shabbat, the holy verses of the Sabbath. And we read in Genesis 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day God finished his work he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day to made it holy, because on it God had rested from all his work that, uh, that he had done in creation. So, God made it. First of all, the Sabbath is made. Now, he doesn't call it the Sabbath. He just calls it the seventh day. All right? 
But it's not like any of the other feasts, because you don't find any of the other feasts until they're appearing at Sinai. Okay? All of a sudden, the Sabbath appears, and it's right in here. Now, what's fascinating is, it is the seventh day, and he made it holy. The Hebrew word for holy is kadosh. Say kadosh. 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 All it means in Hebrew is set aside, separate, something uniquely special. Okay? I think Christians sometimes make the make mistake and they say, uh, there's a number of times in the Torah where it said, uh, God will say, in order to be holy, you need to do my commandments. And so Christians would say, see, they expect that if they do the commandments of God, that they're saved. But see, we have a, we have a misunderstanding of kadosh, because we think it's a right standing with God. It's got nothing to do with the right standing with God. Kadosh means separate, set aside. So an example would be this. Is a Jewish man saved because he does not eat lobster? Nope. Oh, yeah. My granddaughter loves pepperoni. And on Shabbat, Reb Shabbat, we have our uh, evening meal on Shabbat. And so we have pizza, and she loves pepperoni. So I put pepperoni on the pizza, and I ate half. Turkey pepperoni. Okay. <laughs> Now, did that turkey pepperoni give me a right standing with God so I'm saved? Absolutely not. But you would say, you're a weird fairy. <laughs> okay, you fooled your granddaughter. She thought she was going to have pig pepperoni, and you gave her turkey pepperoni. It tastes the same. Okay? So anyway, you understand kadosh. Okay? So God is kadosh. God is separate. Okay? Shabbat. Sabbath is Kadosh. And God said, because I am holy, you will be holy. This is amazing. All of a sudden, God, us, the Sabbath, are all somehow re related. Set aside, separate, special. And to me, I don't know where to go with that. This is just something I've observed. Wow. And there's so much more we could actually talk about this as well, but I haven't got the time, especially in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. But let me talk about this. Archaeologically and historically, okay, there are two cultures and only two cultures on the face of the earth that have a seven-day week. Okay? One of them happens to be Israel. And that all transferred into our day today. The other one is the Babylonian Empire. Now, let me explain. This is cool. The Babylonian Empire recognized that when you actually take a look at the lunar cycle, the lunar cycle basically is 30 days, but it, maybe it's 28 days or whatever. But they said, we're going to standardize it on 28 days, so therefore those are four weeks. So when there's a new moon in Babylon in the 6th century BC, they would say that would be the first day of our week. Two weeks later, okay, the next day, the start of their third would, would be the full moon. And so you'll have scholars say, see, the Jews stole it from them. Problem. The new moon for the month of Av was last Thursday. For the Babylonians, that would be the start of their week. That would be the start of their Shabbat, or the beginning of their week. So Wednesday for the Babylonians probably would be Shabbat. When's our Sabbath? Today! Okay? So when you had the new moon on the first, the Sabbath was on the third. When God created the seven-day week, it's not associated to anything in nature. Nothing. The Jewish calendar is not lunar. It's not solar. It's God. It is amazing because it's not related to anything in nature. You talk about being unique. The whole world has a seven-day week. The Romans didn't like it. They had a ten-day week. The Egyptians didn't like it either. They had a ten-day week. So all the Hebrews were in Egypt for all those years. They had to celebrate a ten-day week. They never had. They had one day off every ten days. Once they were slaves, they probably didn't have any days off whatsoever. So, pretty special. Would you agree? So, let's take a look at another verse, the very words of God. 
Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. And you, many of you already know where I'm at. Exodus 20, verse 8. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, etc., etc. We need to understand what the Ten Commandments are. In Exodus 24, 28, you can take it down in your notes. I'm not going to read it. This is after the golden calf incident. If you remember, after the gold, with the golden calf, Moses broke the first set of tablets. Yes? He comes up and God gives him a second set of tablets. And God is telling him, here's the second set. I'm writing the words of my covenant on that. The Ten Commandments. What are the Ten Commandments? The words of the covenant. Sabbath is not only part of the Ten Commandments and the only appointed time, the only feast that's part of the Ten Commandments, it's the covenant. Ladies and gentlemen, this is huge. This is a big piece of the Sinai covenant, brand new covenant. Amazing. So when you say it's part of the Ten Commandments, understand what the Ten Commandments are. This is the covenant of God made at Sinai. The big picture, and then it goes down from there. This is huge. Only Sabbath is part of that covenant. No other Moed. Not Passover. Not Yom Kippurim. Only the Sabbath. So let's stop and review for a second. Okay. By the very words of God, the Sabbath is first in the list. Yes? And I pose the question, is there perhaps a reason why he put it first? The suggestion is it's probably a big deal. Second of all, we find out that God created it. He created it at the beginning of time. I love the fact that he makes woman. Okay. Well, he made man out of mud. Okay. Gentlemen, you mud. Read it. That's what the Bible says. He made out of mud. You're lower than an amoeba. He takes woman. You know what it says about woman? He built her like an erector set. Okay, seriously. And when he was done, he said, that was good. Very good. Talk about a document that's women's lip, I mean, frees up women. Woo! Okay. And then right after that, what does he do? He creates the Shema. Big deal. And unique, look at this, the seven-day week we talk about. It's the only Moed, or the only appointed time in the ten, or it's the only one part of the covenant. Now, let's consider this, the very words of God. I'm going to go to Exodus 31, verse 12. In Exodus 31, verse 12, we read, matter of fact, I'm going to read a few verses here, starting at Exodus 12. And the Lord said to Moses, You are to speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoa. Capital punishment. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among the people. Six days work shall be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations, as a covenant forever. As a covenant. What did I just say? Part of the covenant. It is the covenant. Okay? One of the ten that's part of the covenant. Now... When we take a look at these verses, we come back to the fact that the Sabbath is a sign. A sign between him and his people. Now the Jewish people would say, we entered a new covenant at Sinai. And God, throughout his Tanakh, throughout the Old Testament, gives us an idea 
of what he means by covenant or a picture of it. So the example would be Isaiah 54, 5. God is speaking through Isaiah to tell Israel, I, your maker, am your husband. The Jewish people say, because of that and many other verses, we were married at Sinai. And what's the covenant at Sinai like? It's like a wedding covenant between a man and woman married in godly marriage. So when we take a look at that human example, try to transfer the things about a human covenant relationship, okay, to God. This is what God is doing. This is our covenant. 